Hey guys, Bill here from Twin Tears Homestead. So we just got back from a little vacation. Um, the weather's somewhat decent out. Uh, it's not the best. A little bit of sun out there. But it's above 50 degrees and it's not raining, so I'll consider that decent. So I uh, thought, while it's not raining, uh, one of the videos I've, I've wanted to do for a little bit is to take you on a little tour around our homestead here uh, and just show you some of the different things and different buildings we have and what we do with them or what we're planning to do with them. So the first one I'm gonna take you to is this building over here. I don't know what the original purpose of this building was. Somebody told me that they had donkeys, um, but I'm not really sure. Uh, we call it the donkey barn right now, or the pole barn. On this side of it, uh, there's just a bunch of old wooden posts and railings from the fence that used to be here. I also keep my lawn roller, lawn roller in there. Um, and this seems to be a haven for woodchucks and cats. So any of the old wooden fence posts we take out, we stick in here, we haven't gotten rid of anything. And some old uh, pipe, I plan to use that for a sprinkler system in the garden, uh, bringing water up from, the, up from the pond. So that's one side of it. And on this side, it's kind of more of the same, but let me get in here so the light adjusts. There we go. So on this side we have more wooden posts that are stacked up. We also have a bunch of different rolls of fencing, some chain link fence, some goat fence, some chicken wire, and we've got some pipes in the background, some gates. I've got my, keep my drag in here, my harrow drag. Again, some more piping and a, a lawn cart. So, Long term, what I'd like to do with this area is to make half of this, turn this half of this into a greenhouse. And the other half I'd like to keep for the goats. So as you can see on this side, it's got a concrete pad underneath it. And on this other side over here, it has half of a concrete pad. So it's got three stalls and then dirt the front half of it here. So I think this would be ideal to be able to put goats in it. Um, I would just close up the entrance a bit because the wind does come out of the south and this is a south facing entrance. So in the winter time it would be quite cold and all the snow and stuff would blow right in there. So I think what I would do is I would close most of this entrance way up so they'd be able to get in and get around there. Now with this side over here that I want to turn into a greenhouse, um, one of the things that has to happen on this building already is uh, a new roof is needed. So you may be able to see up there in the corner, uh, there's, there's a little bit of water damage. So up over in here, there's some additional water damage as well. And the reason why that is, Whoever put this roof on did a bad job. And um, what they did is they shingled over top of an old roof, which is already sh a shingle over a previous roof. And being that the wind comes out of the south here and in the winter time, there's really nothing to slow the wind down because we have no trees on the southern end of our property. The wind gets pretty strong. so. If I step back here, and you can maybe see some of this stuff on the ground, we're constantly losing shingles. And I'm going to have to step back pretty far on this one. So maybe you can see the shape of the condition of that roof. It's in really bad shape. Uh, the top layer is definitely mostly gone. The secondary layer uh, it, it, it's obviously leaking based on some of the damage inside. So what I've been looking at 
is the possibility of taking the entire roof off and replacing it with polycarbonate panels. And the polycarbonate panels, what those are, those are a clear plastic panel. You can get them in a double layer, so they provide some insulation as well. And my thoughts are to take off the south facing roof. You turn around here so the light gets better. To, turn, to take off the south facing roof, because that's where also where the sun comes from, and replace this entire half here with a polycarbonate panel. So the sun will come in and it'll brighten all this up. My, I'm also planning to close this side in with polycarbonate and take all this wood off of here and put polycarbonate in there as well. Now I don't, this won't be a, sus, a sustainable greenhouse in the winter time, but it will help us um, get a jump start on planting and it allows us to keep everything right in here. We do have electricity in this building. Uh, we don't have water though. But the pond is right over there. So it wouldn't be too difficult to take some of this piping that's on the floor, dig a trench, run the line over here, and be able to leverage some of that water. Or I could put in a rain barrel, rain collection barrel, and collect water and then use that for watering the plants that are in here. So that's what I would like to do with this. Um, right now, as I said, I'm just doing the research on the polycarbonate panels. Um, it looks like, I'm guessing, to do this side of the roof, it would be about $1,000, which isn't too bad. Um, I would just have to find somebody to help me do it because I don't think I can do it all by myself. So I'm still, still doing the research on it, but we'll see where that ends up. But let's take you to the next building. So the next building, we're going to go to the big barn over here. That's what we actually call the barn. While, there's another ver uh, while there are others on property that I guess some people would call a barn, uh, we have to kind of differentiate the names of the building. So when we say, I'm going to the donkey barn or the pole barn, people know what we're talking about. While I'm walking here, I'll show you the back pasture. Our property includes that, that grove of trees down there. And you may be able to see the house is way on the other side of those trees. Our property line stops at the far end of those trees. So we're in this in the wintertime we can see the trees back there. We can see the houses. Sorry. But in the summertime it grows in pretty thick. We don't see them at all. Alright, so we're coming up to the big barn. Turn the lights on in here. All right, so I've used this for a couple different things in the past. Um, we've, we've had baby chicks in here. We've raised them in here initially. Uh, there was a, a brooding pen that we had here that we made up. So this used to be a horse farm. If you may have seen one of our other videos, it was a horse farm. And there's three stalls on this side. For horses. There's two smaller stalls over here for feeding. There's a shower, there's a bathroom, and then there's an office. There's also an upstairs and we'll go up and check that out in a minute. And on the far side, this just goes out to the new uh, goat, goat pen that we built. So we don't have the goats yet, but 
my first plan is to get everything in place before we get, actually get the goats. So I'll take a hike upstairs here. So this is the upstairs. It's completely empty. We don't do, well, it's completely empty aside from a couple of wasp nests. We haven't really done anything with this up here um, since we've, since we bought the place. It would be ideal for hay storage if we needed, which we might, you know, when we get to the point of having goats or maybe even other animals. And I guess uh, it'll be ideal for that stuff. Overall, it seems in pretty good shape. Uh, no leaks in the roof. Not yet. And it does have a, an access door here. So if we had a, an elevator, we can easily load the hay up in here, store it up here. And then we have uh, these doors right here where we can drop there we go we can drop feed down in through here and feed any animals that are in the stalls down below so there's one there uh, two over there those are for different stalls and then this one here is split between the two feeding stalls down below so if I were to drop stuff down in there it would actually go to two feeding bins below so, yeah, so I actually, uh, I, I do use this a little bit in the summertime. So when I'm home working and the kids are home from school, sometimes it's hard for them to be quiet, but I may be on phone calls. So we set up a, an office out here for me to use. I could come out here and do what I need to do and have all the peace and quiet that I need to have uh, without having to tell the kids that they have to be quiet every five minutes. So I'm just going to turn a few of these lights off. So the shower here, I actually use this for my chicken processing now. So every time I process chickens, I just set up and do it inside of there. Everything, uh, everything that I don't collect gets washed down the drain. All right, and this is my office, my summer office. It does have a heater, so if it gets a little too cold, and it does have an air conditioning unit if it gets too hot. And then the bathroom. So on this side we have um, Places to hold six saddles. We keep pool equipment there right now. And just a toilet, sink, and a hot water tank. This also has a heater in it. In the event that we want to keep the pipes from freezing during the winter, we will turn that on. Let me turn the lights off. So let's go to the building directly across from that here. This one's um, about the size of a two-car garage. Well, it is the size of a two-car garage because it has two garage doors on it. I keep this one locked up because there's things in here I just wouldn't want to have walk off. Not that it's an unsafe area, but you just never know. So this is what I call the tractor barn. And inside of here, I keep tractors. I'll move on this side. So I've got, uh, got our big bad boy tractor here. We've got our snow blower. We've got my old Craftsman tractor. That was uh, one that we brought up with us from Florida. We have a rototiller. I keep my cement mixer in here, my little earthquake uh, machine, my um, backpack, uh, 
blower in here, and then any type of garden tools and stuff. So this is pretty convenient for us to have all this equipment in here because right outside the door, is our garden area. So it makes it pretty convenient. We could just keep everything in and out of here and go do our work over there. All right, so let's keep moving. All right, so it's a, a, a two bay building, one door over there and one door over here. Has electricity in it, so it's pretty convenient. Uh, what I plan to do is when I bring water up from the pond to be used in the garden area, I plan to set the pump inside of this building and run a hole through the side of it. Uh, that'll give me easy electricity in a protected area. All right, so the next building is a chicken house, which some of you may have seen this already. So we have, um, let's see, I think we have roughly around 55 chickens right now. Uh, the number fluctuates a little bit. I'm gonna take a peek in here. So if you've seen the, the moving day video, um, we moved these Americana birds from where we had them in the house out here. And they're probably about three or four times the size now. They're all doing very well. Um, getting some pretty interesting colors on them. So there's 10 of these. We're gonna be adding those to the flock once they get old enough. And uh, we have roughly 12 of these leghorns. Those are gonna go into the freezer at some point. Those things are great at laying eggs, but there's just too many of them. We'd rather go with brown or green eggs and eliminate the white eggs because the white eggs, you can buy those easily in the store. Um, these are our nesting boxes. We only keep six active nesting boxes right now. We've closed the other ones off. They were just sleeping in a lot of them and making a mess out of them. Um, and all the hens seem to be able to easily lay all their eggs in these without having any problems. So hopefully you guys can see all that. All right. So we'll move on. All right, so I'm gonna take you to another building that's connected to the chicken house here. Um, this is my workshop. So I'm gonna have to turn on a light so you can see me. So there's two parts of my workshop. And they were, they're actually separate buildings. Um, this part right here, so from here down to that opening there, um, again, th this has two stalls in it for horses. I think these were they were kind of used as clean out stalls. There's one stall here and then one stall over there. Uh, so I pretty much use this for all of my projects. If I have a project that I need to do, I do that all here. It's where I keep all of my wood that I plan to use. I consider this my store area. So any wood that I have, I pretty much keep in and stack it up here somewhere. Um, I've got some more in another area. <laughs> Uh, this is all scrap wood that I don't plan to use or it's just a junk pile. Uh, it's either going to get burnt and then the ashes will get thrown into a compost pile. Um, sometimes I might find a piece out of here, but it's like old particle board or desks and stuff like this. Like here, I just don't use it anymore and I don't plan to use it. And, and so I just decided I'm going to get rid of the stuff. Um, this stall... I let the kids keep their toys in it, their outdoor toys, their bikes, or stuff like that. And it's generally a mess. I keep asking them to clean it up, and they keep ignoring me. So, there it is. I like to keep the door closed. All 
All right, and this side, uh, this is my workshop where I keep all my tools and um, you may have seen on a different video that uh, we have some antique cars and one of the cars that I have that I'm working on is this 1928 Falcon Knight. And um, so I keep that car in here while I'm working on it. I'll do a separate video on that at some point, but I've got a, pretty much all my parts in here for the thing. Um, my workbench is just not the cleanest right now because we're still coming out of winter. And I'm not sure about everybody else, but when it's winter and you're working on something and you want to be done, you just want to be done. And so generally I'll start just dropping stuff if I know I'm not going to use it again for a while. So at some point I'll get down here and clean that up uh, now that the weather's turning better. And another workbench over here. And then another workbench over here. A lot of these t workbenches have parts and stuff that came when I bought this Falcon Knight. So, all right, so that's my workshop. Oh, oh <laughs> I should mention this part over here. Uh, I turned this into a mini paint booth. Um, so I wanted a place where I could paint parts to the car. Let me turn the light on here. I wanted a place where I could paint parts to the car and, and kind of minimize the amount of dust and spray over that was going to other parts of the workshop. So this part of the workshop was always here. It had an arched doorway. It was kind of an odd room. I'm not sure what they had originally intended it for. So I just decided to build up a frame around it. I had a screen door uh, laying around. I put that up and then I just put some plastic up there um, and stapled it off with cardboard to hold it all on. And it's worked out pretty well. So I do some spraying inside there. And um, yeah. All right, two buildings left to go. All right, so the next building is purely a junk building. Um, we, were re we did a remodel on our house, um, on our kitchen. And our kitchen had wood all over the place, all over the walls. And it looked, it was just way too much for us. So we ended up taking all that wood off. It's stacked up in here right now and I have plans for it. Um, we also have an old tractor, garden tractor, lawn tractor, whatever you want to call it, that came, with the, that came with the house. It was a piece of junk, so that's sitting in here. <coughs> a couple of old humidifiers, and this PVC and, and fencing you see, that was an old chick brooder that I built. It, it turned out to be way too big, but it's one of those things where I've not had a chance to fix it or take it apart yet, but I don't plan to throw any of it away. And then I've got some old posts that used to line the, our front yard over on that side. We've taken them out. Um, so all of this is just storage. At some point, I figured if I wanted to increase our chicken flock, and if I ran out of space in the other chicken house, this actually backs up to the chicken yard. So we'll go around the side of it here. Or if maybe I wanted to get pigs. So here we are. You can see it goes right up to the back of the chicken yard. It would be easy enough for me to cut a hole in the this building and take the wire out and just use this as another building for animals to come in and out of the chicken yard. So we'll see where we end up going with that right now. To me though, that's mostly my junk storage. Kind of like the donkey barn. But I have plans for the donkey barn. All right, the last building is um, probably the biggest one that we have on property. I don't know if it's bigger than our house, but it's it's got to be pretty close to it. It's what we call the warehouse. Only because, like a lot of other places, a lot of other buildings, we use it for storage. But in this case, it's not junk storage. And I keep this one locked up as well. 
because there's more valuable stuff in here. So we'll go in and I'll go over here and open up the door, get some light in here, turn some lights on. So let me open this up. There we go. So in this building, uh, I keep my truck, I keep my cargo trailer, I keep some of my work tools, I keep my Massey Ferguson tractor, and then on the back end here are the other two antique cars that we have. I'll just give a quick show of them right now. Uh, so let's see here, let me make sure I get it in the shot. So this car is a 1929 Willys Whippet. Um, it's in great shape. I'll do a walk around on that some point later. And this one here is a 1925 Willys Overland. So they're both in great shape. Um, look forward to taking them out on the road soon. So we'll talk about the property a bit. All right, so you can see up the road there, our property goes up to the road. It comes down this tree line right here, up to our barn. It goes down that fence line over there. And then all the way down around back. You can see that same fencing going all the way down back. It goes all the way to the back of those trees. Uh, straight across the back of them and then back up the north side of the property lot. Don't mind that door creaking. <clears throat> well, we can't really see the, the corner, but it's it's way down. The north side is way, way, way down there. So, all together we have about uh, just under seven and a quarter acres here yeah and I think it's uh it works for us let me flip flip this around here works for us um, you know definitely a lot of maintenance with this many buildings it, and it's not like we were looking for this type of place we wanted something with property and we wanted something with some outside storage that was our original plan when we were buying um, this place was an option and turned out to be, uh, I guess, the right option for, for us. So we still have a lot of work to do around here. Um, a, a lot to do to get this to where we want it to be. And, uh, you know, it's a little tough because I, I, I work full time and I have um, only so many hours in the day to do stuff here on the cars, spend time with the kids. I'm surprised they're not out here now because usually they are. But um, yeah, so we'll see how the journey goes and hopefully as time goes on, we'll be adding some more animals, some goats. I'd like to see some goats here and uh, maybe some pigs. I know Karen's talked about wanting pigs and my brother-in-law's wanted also going on pigs here. So if we can make that happen, I think that would be great. I think it helps add to the whole cycle of of uh, how different animals work well together between the chickens and the pigs and the goats um, and just helping us build the land and prepare the land for some of the things that we want to do with planting um, and to just get closer to the food that we consume. Right, so that's that's a big thing of why we want to do this is we want to we just feel more comfortable with knowing where our food comes from. Um, I'm less and less comfortable with the food that you get at the store, uh, just knowing that it's, most of it is commercial agriculture. And I know that people are in business to make money and I get that, but generally when that happens, there's corners that are cut and I don't necessarily know that when it comes to food that I want to have that at m those corners cut at my expense or my family's expense. 
So anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I have for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything uh, that you want me to go over in more detail on, I'd be happy to do it. So until next time, we'll see you guys on the next video. Feel free to uh, subscribe and like and share with others. It would really help us, guys. All right, talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.